uh, let's call the meeting to order. Judy distributed uh, minutes from our last meeting um, in January. Does, is anyone prepared to move acceptance? I move we accept the minutes. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, Judy. Aye. Thanks. Um, so the center school, uh, sorry, I was sort of hurling materials at you as I was receiving them, <laughs> as you could probably tell. Um, the background is that not much has been happening. Um, the ad hoc committee met in early January. We perhaps even be, perhaps before, no, I think after the historical commission meeting met, we had a good discussion. We agreed that neither application was complete. We each submitted questions. Brian collated them. Maybe I sent this all to you in a note. And now we have the two responses. In the meantime, Brian has resigned and has passed the project off to Sylvie, his uh, assistant town administrator, our assistant town administrator. And she has not yet, sorry, I don't mean to put this all on Sylvie, which is not fair, <laughs> but uh, we haven't yet even had a, you know, a doodle sort of when can we meet? Um, I'm really hopeful that happens soon. Um, so any questions about that, about process and where we are not, where we are? Okay. Um, I think it would be useful uh, if folks have had a chance to look at the two responses um, to have a bit of a discussion uh, about anything you want to talk about, but particularly the historic preservation um, relevant components of it. Um, shall we start with the uh, Sear and Gillermini, the one that I sent out first from the people I call the two guys in Boston? Is that okay? <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Um, who would like to begin? I mean, does anybody have any comments? Judy looks like a pot that is about to boil over. Oh, I'm no. trying to figure out how to express it. It's sort of oh, like, okay. like uh, they're saying, we can make it work, but... It doesn't leave you well. You didn't find it reassuring that they pointed out the end that the 90 day walkout with no penalty um, clause they wanted for themselves would also apply to the town? Hmm. Yeah, but I don't think the town has to accept anyway. No, I'm being, I, I was being ironic. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was encouraged that they thought that they would try to do something for the town. And I don't know that the economics of it will work, but I think the town would like that very much. And I think probably the CPA would be willing to give more money if it were to be a building to be used for the town. Um, maybe not enough to offset the extra costs involved, but but I did find that encouraging. Other comments on that point? I was still confused by how basically how that would work. I think this is part of what Judy's saying. Excuse me, the financial viability of doing a community based plan. Well, they did say it would probably have office space upstairs. Yeah, but would that be enough to cover? Not even the cost of the work, but the ongoing the maintenance. Price. Oh. Well, 
I don't know. I don't know if they're expecting that the town would pay them, would rent, rent space from them, or somehow be financially responsible. I, I couldn't understand it at all. No, I, I, I can have to excuse me for a minute. I'll be right back. Go ahead, Allison. Um, I I wasn't sure what to think of it either. I I want to believe it's a genuine offer, or I or I can't tell if it's just a way of um, making it sound, you know, like they're a better choice. Because I don't I don't I still don't quite understand how it would work, but. And remember, they never, they have not been inside the building. Right. That was the, that was really uh, quite a piece of information. <laughs> you know? um, I, I, I just find it astonishing. I, I mean, it took this town 12 years to get its town hall renovated. There are now, last year, there were over 300 events planned there. If you count every single time some entity or person rented the space, but there are still many, many daytime and nighttime hours that when the town hall is not used. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so and, I'm, and I'm, that's an unusually attractive kind of space. It's hard to find a, a room that will seat whatever the seats, 100 and whatever. 180, 180. Yeah. 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 That's hard to find a place like that. Much easier to find a place that seats 20, 40. But. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I can't understand what's motivating this application. <laughs> it seems too good to be true, I guess is what I'm saying. And I don't want to sound cynical or, um, but it, and that could just be because I don't understand how they're going to make that work. Right. Um, does anybody have any, um, did anybody have any concerns about the historic preservation? Act? What are DOI guidelines, by the way? They refer Part to that. Department of the Interior. Department of the Interior. Oh, Could the be? Secretary. The Secretary Standards. Thank you. <laughs> no, I just sorry. I was actually looked it up. <laughs> couldn't find it. Um, anybody have any historic preservation related concerns about what they have said? <coughs> that part they seem to be more converse it with than I expected. Yep, I agree. Okay. You know, if it doesn't work, it's their problem, right? Especially well, if it doesn't thing. work, it's their problem, but <laughs> given that, stuff. I, I mean, uh, maybe I speak only personally, but I believe that the building could deteriorate beyond you know, the possibility of repair at some point. And I would not want the town to sell it to someone who had all kinds of uh, partially formed notions. And then three or four or five years later have nothing, you know, no more work having been done. And the person, the owner could then put it on the market again. So I'm, th that's, that is the a preservation worry. restriction allows us to take them to court. And then right. these guys would have deeper pockets than, than Bob O'Bear. I don't know that. How do you know that? The size of their enterprise and the the um if they if they're able to get a Line of credit from a local bank, even based in Boston, of that size. 
I think their financials have to be pretty good. So you think that that uh, takes away my concern? I, I'm, no, I'm, asking, I'm asking you, I'm actually asking you seriously. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> well, when we went into this, one of everybody's everybody's concern was that it sit there and we and Brian and you and I talked about it and we agreed that the preservation restriction gave the town pretty good ability to require them to do to maintain the building okay so that's helpful I mean, one would presumably have to take them to court, but it's yeah, it's feasible. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be cheaper for them to deal with the building than to go to court. So. I I think they really have made such a good faith effort to respond to the findings of the ad hoc committee. Um, you know, down to the sort of detailed listing of every town committee and commission that would have to have a voice in Susan's <laughs> in the development of a community center. Um, but I don't, I don't see, I mean, we know that the reason the town hall was saved is that a reasonably not not large, but a number of townspeople just committed themselves to getting it saved. And I'm not just talking about the fundraising and the community center idea, I think, was tossed out. But, you know, the town's already having to deal with its part of the South County uh, Senior Center project. No, no funding yet um, identified for that. Maybe it's not you know, maybe it's a bit of a red herring because I, I believe they make clear that if the community center idea doesn't take shape, they would they believe they'd move forward and develop the two condominiums. Is that the way everybody else read it? That's how I read it, but I wonder how the determin determination is made as to whether the community center is viable. How Does much the work are they going to put into the you know, proof of concept on that one? Was it, it was a community space, right? Yes. I, I mean, right. And I'm not saying they wouldn't. It just isn't clear to me how that decision will be made. Do you mean, and by whom? Mm -mm. I mean, they talked about this pilot program. I don't know. I, I just feel like I'm missing details on that. Um, anything else anybody wants to talk about, about that application or the supplementary material? Not yet. Um, I, so I, I, go ahead. Sorry, Ellen. No, I was just going to say, I've, I've not really read the uh, the Boston group proposed uh, responses. I have read the um, O'Bears one, so. Okay. I have to have a closer look at it. Okay. Um, well, should we move on to O'Bear? Yeah. would like to begin. I didn't I, I hadn't realized um how much time they had been put into waiting for uh paperwork to go through 
Did you guys know about all that? Some of that. I was, yeah, I was not aware of the amount of delay he's had. I was wondering why that project was not moving forward. It wasn't entirely the government's fault. Yeah. No, no, but but I but but it, it is true that because because that building does not have a preservation restriction that the Mass Historical no. Commission has helped to shape. No, come here. It just took. I thought she was saying no to me. Sorry, <laughs> I hadn't even made a point yet. <laughs> um, um, it, it, I know that it it did take them three full tries to get that approved. Uh, just for the record, and this isn't a disqualifying point. The East School is not on the National Register. Judy said that several times when Aubert first appeared and I checked it again today. He he doesn't know the difference between the state uh, register. register, sorry, yeah. register, thank you, and the national register. Um, the, the Allison, sense. you're muted, you're muted. And frozen. Mm -hmm. No, here we go. No, no, I, just, I, just... I was very surprised when I read that. That's why I said it was really news to me when I read about those hurdles that he listed. Right. I also didn't know that they've been that they're they're working on the inside in five months along. I mean, I asked this. This is my question. Um, uh, well, of course, and of course, poor Sylvie didn't give us the questions for Aubert, you know, and it was bad enough that she was sending it to us in the middle of a holiday weekend. But um, uh, I didn't, I, I must say, if, if uh, my intention at least was not to uh, cast aspersions on his notion of a single year, but simply to ask, you know, and I think we had discussed this, what's different that makes you think you could do this in a year? Um, and he's kind of answered that. I didn't know about the Eversource thing. And, and the whole thing seemed a bit I'm not sure what the word is exactly. Blythe might be the, the the nature of the responses. Oh yeah, we've got engineers who can deal with this problem, and okay, not an awful lot of detail on how they're going to deal with it. But that's um, the I... initial reaction was you could probably do it, but that's sort of his word. Um, if if I had only read his application and these questions, I might wonder if he had bothered to look at the draft preservation restriction document, which is what, 40 pages long? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I think I reported to all of you that I checked into the large project that he's done up in Turner's Falls and it it has all been done to the secretary standards. So part of it is he's, this is much better written than the original application is, for sure. <laughs> you know, these answers. Um, he, he's a little casual. Uh, one of the reasons, I'm to switch gears slightly, one of the reasons I was um, willing to sit through the webinar on substitute, the use of substitute materials was the concern about the roof, the roof center school. And Judy, thank you for pointing out the preservation briefs. I, I at least didn't know that this one, the use of that I sent around to people has, was revised just last year and it was revised considerably. Um, the, uh, the 90 minute message from the National Park Service on the use of substitute materials comes down to a big large, it depends and a lot on the subjective judgment of local historical commissions um, or whatever the governing body is. But, but um, 
I'm not going to read you the whole list of reasons that they think are valid for using acceptable substitute materials, but one is economic feasibility. Either the outright initial feasibility of replacing in kind or the ongoing maintenance costs. Um, so since I will be going to a meeting sometime soon, I hope, of the ad hoc committee, I, I would be very, uh, I, I really want your thoughts and advice on how we might respond to a suggestion that the roof in particular be replaced with something other than slate. As I read the preservation brief, it says, yes, economic feasibility, but it says that the replacement has to be similar in appearance and style and right. visual impact. Right. And All true. I don't think this, his suggestion of an asphalt shingle roof would do that. Right, a composite or asphalt shingle of similar likeness. Uh, uh, my guessing is he means a multicolored, um, you know, those architectural asphalt shingles that are sort of layered on top of one another rather yeah. than being flat. I, I'm not arguing for it. I'm think I'm I'm guessing what he's talking about. We put those on a house once, you know, so I know a little, you know. Um, but go ahead. What's your well, they do make uh, a composite slate. I have no idea of the economics of it. But I don't think the, the um, asphalt the architectural shingles would qualify. Well, they don't look like slate. They're just prettier oh. asphalt. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, they, they don't, don't. They can't look like slate. They're not stone. <laughs> no. Um, so the question I think is, do we have, uh, other than the precise wording that Judy's called out, which is important, if, if we, if we, if the town sells this building and the preservation document is approved pretty much as written, then this group this commission has the responsibility to over provide oversight to the renovation. Um, do we have an opinion that's sort of overarching or do we, do we believe that we'd have to stay on top of it enough to have opinions about various pieces of a renovation? He doesn't mention the windows, by the way, at all. I think at all. And remember that the Boston people had the nice application from Jade at Hartwood, who, who definitely knows about windows. <laughs> no. I think you have a legal document that has to be enforced. Right. right. I don't think right. you can pick and choose about it. Right. Yeah, I don't think we have a choice. Right. Okay. So uh, everybody agree on that? Okay. I mean, you could so the try to first... amend the document, but I don't think. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, you. <laughs> no, but I mean that's that's the option. I think is is not not right. the enforcement, but but if you don't like the provisions, or if someone doesn't like the provisions of the document, then you have right. to amend the document. Whether that's doable or desirable right. is another question. Right, and we have a document that we all labored over and that the town administrator and select board approved. Um, town, Brian read it very thoroughly. One member of the select board read it very thoroughly. The others I'm sure looked at it. Um, so I think one of my jobs with the ad hoc committee, which has you know, includes people with various points of view is to make sure that they understand this. I think I'd spend some time with Sylvie too. If she has That's him. A good, That's yeah. a good idea. If she's yeah. overseeing, yeah. she needs to. Right. I'm sure she's totally unfamiliar with any of this. 
she sat through the meeting, the first meeting of the ad hoc committee, and I asked her one question about affordable housing because one member of the ad hoc committee was hoping, I just expressed a wish that the applications have different content, program content. And um, actually, Sylvie didn't answer the question I asked because she is somewhat knowledgeable about that, isn't she? Well, she was sort of involved with the housing production plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would just I would just say by the wayside that I was talking to Catherine Walkowitz, who chairs the housing committee and has for a very long time about about the center school. And Catherine said, I told I don't know who she told 15 years ago that building cannot be used for affordable housing. There are just too many aspects of it that would never meet the state's requirements. I, I haven't asked her for that because it's not really an argument that I, it's not relevant right now. Um, so I can't, I cannot argue the point, but she was very clear about it. Well, she keeps wanting to rely totally on the state rules without thinking about the CPA rules. And I don't know if there's enough CPA money to to help, but they're they're different. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, 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 I do know. know. Yeah, right. Okay. At any rate, it's not a discussion I'm going to get into because I don't know enough to be intelligent about it. Um, Judy, I do want to ask you. Sorry. Um, anything else about Obear? Okay. Um, could you, and uh, I, with apologies, you've done this before, but would you mind um, talking us through again the why that lot is non-conforming and why if the building fell down or were demolished, it would be highly unlikely that anything else could be put on the property? I, I, I'm it's clear to me that at least some people don't understand that. <clears throat> well, there are two problems with the lot. Um, one is that it's too small to qualify right. as a building lot in AR1. I've forgotten um, the exact dimensions. I think you need 40,000 square feet. Anyway, it's only, it's, it's less than two thirds of the size that you would need mm -hmm. for a mm -hmm. building lot in that zoning area. Um, as and long that's, as the that's, that, that's for a building, whether it is residential or for any other purpose. Well, I guess nothing, no other purpose would be approved, right? There's a limited number of uses that are allowed in that, in it's in the agriculture residential one district. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a limited number of uses that are involved. You could actually have a restaurant there, but there wouldn't be parking enough um, or septic enough. The other problem is that the zoning requires 200 feet of frontage on one street. This lot has 200 feet of frontage in aggregate, but it's divided between the two streets. Thanks. And, and it's hard to say where one street stops and the other begins. Yeah, but, but still. I'm <laughs> yeah, but, from, but, but given yeah. Judy's arithmetic, neither of them no, could do right, anything exactly. to get to 200. No, <laughs> no. get to 199. Right, right. Okay, um, that's, go ahead. Sorry. So either one would be crippling. Together, they're doubly so. Hypothetically, could it be overridden by the ZBA? Could a special permit be issued? ZBA can issue a variance. A variance, but, excuse me. You issue, planning board issues special permits, right? Well, they issue special permits too, but that's... That's, uh, in this case, you need a variance from the zoning before you can do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, the variance, there are like three three allowable rules, and I don't know them off the top of my head. One is financial hardship. One is geography. 
Um, and I've forgotten the third. They do not believe that if you are buying a property and you're saying that you can claim financial hardship for doing something that you knew you shouldn't be able to do anyway, mm -hmm. or for a geographical problem that you knew existed. Geographic meaning sighting or proximity yeah. to well, wetlands I think that, or that or exception very... is intended intended for things where all of a sudden your septic tank fails and you need to have a new septic tank in a yeah. place that wouldn't otherwise be authorized. You know, it's an emergency or you couldn't right. have foreseen or okay, uh, that thanks. kind of thing. And the and but, this but, and this I mean, sorry. They're pretty scrupulous about that. So you can <laughs> so you can only build under this reuse provision, I think. And and the special um, the approval that the historical commission issued, which sorry I went to have in front of me and I don't a few years ago, um, but we must have issued it in advance of when of the request okay. for leasing applicants has um, is quite specific about the purposes that it is for the current building and it, a specific so set of. The whole zoning provision is building specific. It's it is building, building specific. It's building dependent. Right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Any other thoughts about the center school? Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep you informed. Maybe I'll offer to lend Sylvia a hand and send out a doodle poll <laughs> so we can have the meeting. <laughs> um, uh, we had she also must be talked going crazy. She must be going crazy. It, it's, I, just, I mean, taking a new job and having your supervisor um, decide to leave fairly quickly is not easy. And right. having to assume half of his work or a good chunk well, of I, I hope it's not half, but yeah, yeah. Um, okay, thanks. Um, Judy, do you want to, should we go to the North Street area form? Do you want to? Well, I've gotten very nice submissions from Allison on Dairy Histories um, for, for Quan Quan, Fairview Farms, and um, Hillside. Hillside. And um, Donna sent some history updates. And the reason that I had to leave was Liz Scott just brought over a Scott Farm history for me oh, to look nice. at. So, oh, that's great. So, so, and it's thick. Well, I think I haven't opened the envelope yet, so I don't know. So we're progressing nicely. That's excellent. Is there anything I can help with? Yeah. Any gaps? What about the Roaring Brook Farm history, Judy? It's It's not... Uh, I, that information I gave you came out of an interview I was doing with Sylvia when I was really talk, trying to get her to talk about uh, the picnic area and Roaring Brook. Yeah. Not really asking about the farming. They're probably well, not more, sure more to of, learn. How to fit it in there. Well, there were many similar farms along the street, the Crafts Farm. Right. Uh, but here's one a, a person who could tell us, you know. Yeah. Um, I think... I think with the crafts day books, there's enough there to piece a little bit together. But also that's... I'm only asking because I think Susan knows Sylvia pretty well. Yes, yeah, Susan? Very well. So that's something Susan could figure yeah. out how to have a chat with her about for 15 yeah. minutes, you know. I'm sure she'd love it. You know, I'm laughing to myself. I'm happy to do it. There was no such thing as a 15, 15 minute minutes. Well, you might learn other Sylvia, things. But, <laughs> but I love her. She loves me. It would not be a problem. I be, I barely know her. And the last time I saw her, we had nearly an hour conversation about her right. attractive coleus. <laughs> oh, <there you> go. <laughs> so well, 
I mean, there is that farm history. It's a good and idea. It may not have been a commercial dairy. I mean, that's not all we're interested in, is it? Jenny? No, no. There's there's a whole other aspect of, of farming on North Street. I, I which I that... just generalized about, you know, why, you know, very broadly. Um, you know that um, Derica has been deeply into the Jack and George uh, journals, yeah. Jack and George yeah. crafts, and. Um, Perhaps uh, I, I I don't know how much detail we really want. I mean, I, in the tiny little bit of work that I did, I tried to just produce some very short facts, okay. you know. Um, I'd sort of been looking at this in centuries, and I think the the type of farming that was Roaring Brook and the Crafts Farm and probably almost every other farm on the street in the second half of the 19th century, or maybe even the whole 19th century, and into the 1920s and 30s was very similar. Um, and I don't think the farms were necessarily very large. Um, they all grew some stuff. They all sold some butter. Some of them sold Later, some Yeah, I'm sorry. They 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 all had some livestock, some some produce, so yes, and some uh, sort of kitchen work, <laughs> you know, as you said, making butter and cheese and that kind well, of thing. Well, but for example, the crafts got into the cider business. That was that was yeah, unique yeah. to them. Yeah, the other farm enough, was not different. Enough. And yeah, I don't know. True. I mean, I guess I just don't know about Roaring Brook Farm enough to know that there wasn't. I know they sold potatoes, for example, um, but I don't because I've seen an ad for that in newspaper, not that Sylvia told me. Um, so I just don't know kind of commercially where they fit into that mix. And and maybe there's nothing to find out, but maybe there is. And one thing we'll have to do is kind of go back and look at who owned what when. Because I don't know when Roaring Brook Farm started and, and or well, well Sylvia can tell you they know, started whoever started was there with probably did roughly the same thing. Started with her grand grandmother's first husband. If you can kind of do the math from there. Yeah. That's right. You put that in. Um who is a Scott? I'm happy to have the conversation with her. Um and see what she can tell us. That sounds good. Um, Judy, were were you going to do some do something about the nineteenth century industry or, yourself? That's one of your bullet points. Well, I was gonna. I got nominated for the wallets in the tannery. I don't know anything at all about the tannery except where it is on the map, but that's probably good enough. Um, Which tannery are you talking about? The one that was up near Quanquan. On the yes, okay. I just know that it was there. I don't know anything else, but I'm I don't think try. there's a whole lot more. I mean, you can read in crafts and temple a little bit about it, you yeah. know, but it was sort of early. Eighteen. One thing that I would like to know more about I, the road. Originally, didn't make that jog by Baronesses. It went straight, and it went. It was the Conway. It was the road that went to Conway. Have you have you looked at um, the presentation of the uh, the project that was done maybe fifteen or twenty years ago? The history of the roads in Waitley. No, I so it, it, this is something Lynn Sibley supported while she was doing some other job, and there is an enormous loose leaf notebook in town offices that I used for a while, but there's also a summary presentation and Maida has put it up on the historical society website. Okay. So you might just, it's, that's pretty, but know that there is more than that. If you need yeah. Yeah, more. Um, because, you know, nobody was going near the swamp in the early days. You just hung to the high road. Um, you had did did you see my note about um the the maps you know the your yeah. question um so I don't remember which one of you Alan or Allison took the time to draw that <laughs> you know we've got up on hidden history the original 
borders of the town, boundaries of the town, and then the revised one. Wow. Somebody. The, Alan, the Alan Fiddle was that. Yes. So, I did some so of that, we, yeah. should, we should extract it and not do the work again because <laughs> it no, took time. I don't know that we need it, but if we, it's good to know that it's there if we do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I should also say that I th almost everything that I sent you was in, I took from something else I had worked on with other people. Um, so if any of it is wrong, don't be, let me know because I should fix it in, <laughs> in the other okay. location as well. <laughs> the, the other people were Allison and Alan <laughs> so just to, and Maida. Um, so... Do you want somebody to write up Nasami, the the uh, the August Farm, or not? I I gave. Did you do that? I'm Judy sorry. The dates of the sale and the purchase. Yeah. Okay. And that's and you know there's not much else to say except the the name change for the organization. Right. Right. I mean Nasami to Noofs to Native Plant Trust. We have the dates of that, yeah. and we have the August. We have some of the August farming information as well. Yeah, from our other project, right. and that's as good as we're going to get because that's right from Nancy August, and there aren't too many other sources for that. Right. Right. You know, these histories are sort of murky because they're not written up. You know, a lot of these small farms are not recorded in the way that some of the other ones are. And uh, they didn't do advertising. You know, they didn't make it into the paper. Um, and well, we it's fortunate we don't need a lot of detail. We just okay. need to give a... Will we ever credit. need more detail, well, though? I'm sorry? Will we ever need more detail or we just don't? I don't think we do. I okay, think fine. we're trying fine, to... Fine. I assumed that later we would need it. And we should might as well get it now. Um, I think we're trying to give an overview of what went on. Okay, I see. Okay. And, and probably to insert just enough real names and real <laughs> details to demonstrate that we're not just pulling from somebody else's boilerplate. Well, I think I think you guys would agree that as long as we're flipping over rocks and seeing what's underneath, we might as well collect that information because it's yeah. important to have, you know, not for this project, but just to have. Right. And we should but also be now we won't have people to tell us these stories. Right. Yeah. We should be keeping a record of our sources too. Like right. Interviews with Sylvia and right. And Nancy August and right. Whatever else. Okay. Because we will need a we will need a bibliography. Right. I, I was thinking of that. So uh, mine are fairly obvious, but I'll send you a separate note. Okay. About that. Um, anything else, Judy, that you want us to talk about, about that? No, I'm, it's nice to see it coming along. Is there but anything else, Judy, you want me to do? Let me. Oh, give me a shout. Tell me what else you think I can okay, do. Okay. Well, anything about the cider. Okay. I'd be happy to talk to Derek about it. Do we want to include anything about um, the sap lines, you know, in terms of how North Street is a source for sap for syrup? That's pretty interesting. Uh, well, John that's Hannum, true. John it's... Hannum had lines all up along. Anderson's. Well, that's, again, yeah. and that's part of something that everybody always did. I'm sure. Because it was it was it was the source of sugar, right? Well, no, it was <laughs> the source of honey. Yeah, was... of honey too. Yeah. Well, um, I think or syrup. I'm not yeah. sure how to document it, but it's an ongoing part of our history. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And one that's also as, like as are the orchard. As are the orchards. Um, yeah, I mean, the sap lines are pretty much wherever maple trees will grow, and that seems like a lot right. of different places. So. Well, yeah, but, but you have to have left woods. Yeah. You know. there's, there's the sap lines, and then there's the processing. You know, there's a sugar house down at Baronis's, and I'm not sure what the history of that one is. John Hannum's using it now, but I don't know that that's always been the case. 
I don't think it is. It has. Right. Only recently have we seen him down there. Right. I mean, he right. had been farther up. No, I think he expanded his business when when he retired. Um, I think the area form for Baroness's gives a date for that sugar house. Oh, does it? Oh. Walter and I used to have a sugar house. Oh, yeah? Hmm. It was either... Yeah, I think Walter. It was either Walter or Henry Baldwin, one or the other. Again, I, I can I can easily ask. Yeah, yeah ask about that. That would yeah. be very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really a great point. And it's sort of funny that I think we all, as Alan more or less just did, take for granted that everybody has you know, sap wines on right, their but property. It's, it's like cows. You know, there are people who yeah. had a cow for milk, and then there's people right. who are in the dairy business. And those are two right. different right. things. There's some of these people who are doing it for their home use, but right. other people were doing it like Keith Bardwell is, you know, doing it commercially. Right. So that's an interesting. Well, another, another place the technology has really made it easier when you're having to drive horses through the woods with the pail, dumping pails into a vat. It was a lot easier, a lot harder to yeah. produce big volume. Right. Right. All right. Well, Judy, let me know what else I could help with okay well the cider would be good cider um, okay got it and and are you writing up the campground yourself by by the campground you mean white birch you don't mean the yeah, i think that's it, i sent allison uh baroness yep and i wrote you the date that was, that was, the camp. i have a few facts about the campground yeah um when it started and, and the like. We can leave out the fact that it's a standing agenda item for our Board of Health, um, which which it is now. Oh no. And we and we've decided. I, I go. I say this every time. We are not talking about Waitley Glen as part of this, right? We're we're stopping at the town frontage. Yeah. Okay. Anything about? documenting timeline for the Great Waitley Swamp? You know, when was that always state owned or did that it's it's happen? not all state owned. It's 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 a real hodgepodge of ownership. Ask Judy. Yeah. I there's mean, islands, of, my, there's islands of property life. in there that are privately owned. There's there's federal ownership. There's state ownership. Oh, okay. Yeah. The it's, state it's, has it's, been buying it. Um, I would say for the last 20 years, maybe 20, 25, 30. The state, what did you say? The state has owned most of it? Was that what you said? No, I said they've been <laughs> buying it lot by lot. By right, lot. right, 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 right. I um, sold, I sold a parcel in 2009 or 10, I think. I'm, I'm just, I'm reaching for, I, I had copied out a couple of pages of um, uh, Mark Wamsley's um, paper on Nasami, and I don't remember how much he talks about the swamp. Well, re remember, um, Donna, there there was information in the Sanderson account books about the logging that they were doing, it, It's and they said in the Great Swamp. So there's, right. there's early evidence or, you know, Yes, evidence of of the logging that was going on in there. I may get uh, back over to to um, the PBMA library to look at those uh, account books again. Oh, that you can spend your life looking at them. Another, they're so fabulous. Yeah, they are. <laughs> for another reason, and if I do, I'll I'll keep I'll. I think I kept some of the entries from that just out of curiosity. But I, there's also there are also records of um, in like that Sabina Bartlett account book that the Historical Society owns. He rented out his son and or himself, you know, for town labor for um, I think helping drain part of the Great Swamp. And so you you can you can point to a day and a date and how much he was paid to do that kind of thing. But the area that we mapped out stopped at the river. Oh, okay. Well, 
I don't, which isn't immutable, but once you get into the swamp, you're. Well, I think the swamp <laughs> once came across the river. The swamp didn't stop at the river. Swamp was all the lowlands. I understand. Yeah. But I think it was. So it would have been your backyard for sure. Still pretty boggy, but I think it probably was cleared fairly early this side of the river. I mean, they're they're logging on the other side of the river. Hard to say. You know. It, yeah, it is. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, our pasture is tiled, and I don't think anybody did tiling. Yeah. Uh, in the not tiled. They, they they dug ditches which you can still see see on the lidar and see if you walk through there they ditched it yeah you they mean, did but it's tiled it's there are also tiles in there well maybe in your yard but i mean out in the what is still got trees on it it's ditches oh, yeah in okay. the pasture i said the pasture i'm sorry Anyway, there is some there is some history to it, but if we stop at the river, maybe we don't have to deal with that so much. And by tiles, you mean the sort of half pipe sections, the the rounded curves <laughs> that are. I think they were yeah. round with holes, fully round with holes in them. Oh, like the ones in front of our house that prevent the water from coming into our yeah. basement now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so. Maybe, maybe so the project doesn't Wait, get big, bigger than it needs to be. We should, as we do some research, you know, capture what we need for the area form, but save the resource material that we've bothered to find for other projects. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, anything else on that now, Judy? No. no. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we'll wait, we'll wait. Well, Susan has an assignment. We'll wait for further assignments. Um, any other thing, any other topic that you think that we need to discuss? Uh, one, one thing I need to mention is that um, for everybody, I'm gonna have to pull back from the commission at some point in the next few months. Um, my eyes, close to vision is really deteriorating and I'm having some issues with motivation too. So I need to pull back, so. We don't have to find a replacement immediately, but um, sometime pretty soon. Okay, so by pullback, I'm hearing, unfortunately, Resigning you're, the committee, you're, yeah. you're right. You're not talking about a leave of absence. No, I'm not unless the doctor has a miraculous uh, solution to the eye problems right now. But it's uh, okay. I'm having to enlarge everything. And oh, I'm sorry. That's so, that's hard. Age creeps up on you. Not much I can do about it. Hey. Well, on that cheery note, let's all think about that. <laughs> and we'll think about replacements. About other folks. Yes. <laughs> um, we'll certainly do that. Um, and actually, I should just say, I don't think I ever told any of you, and I'm not saying this because uh, to think about, you know, filling your seat while you're still in it, Alan. But remember that Stephen Micasel dropped in on our meeting sometime in the fall yeah. yeah well after that he wrote to me and asked if he and suzanne his wife could meet with if, if we could meet and i said sure and we met for coffee at leo's table i recommend leo's table over in south deerfield pays pays their staff a little a living wage um and we had a very nice talk he i won't Or you with how they got here, which is sort of funny story. But he um, he was an employee for a long time of the California version of the Massachusetts Historical Commission, and oh. then became a consultant. And uh, what um, what I found sort of too bad is that he's not he said he was not interested in joining a standing committee, but that he wanted me to know that he knows some things and that he was available to be helpful. Have you, he's practically your, you know, he he lives, Susan, on the other side of Nasami. He lives in Nancy August's house. But oh. I asked him, he didn't know you, he didn't know Fred. No, I um, know. They know your friend, Sue. 
uh, Allison because, of course, they are neighbors. But um, they bought the house for their grown daughter and came out to live with her. He's yet another retired faculty member from the UC system. We seem to have all these California faculty members coming here. It's quite interesting. And then the daughter and her family moved up to Vermont. So now they're in the house. <laughs> no. They're very nice. <laughs> Keep an eye out for signs of life when I walk that way. Yeah, yeah, do, do, do. Um, sorry, I, I don't, I don't remember when I met with them before Christmas, I think. Um, so anything else? Okay. Yeah. And Allison, you haven't. Oh, Allison, you didn't leave. Um, and you were supposed to leave. So our next meeting is. If it's okay with everybody on uh, March 18th, which is actually not a federal holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Almost all our How meetings we are. That? <laughs> no. oh, Alan, geez. were you the one who picked the third Monday as the no, standard meeting time, or did the, you inherit uh, a, that? I inherited that. Well, there are probably more holidays than there were whenever that t was picked. <laughs> when, when there aren't many more now than there used to be, I think, when the commission was founded. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Shall we adjourn? Hey. Thank Let's you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.